Assalamu alaikum. This video is about plantar fasciitis that is the common cause of heel pain. To know about plantar fasciitis one should know about fascia and fasciitis. So fascia is basically a band of tissues that gives the structure to your body and also helps in functional movements. There are many kind of fascias in the body and plantar fascia is one of them. Plantar fascia is the band of tissues that connects your heel to the toes and makes the arc of your foot. Whenever the fascia is inflamed, it will lead to fasciitis or whenever there is an inflammation in plantar fascia, it will lead to plantar fasciitis. That is the common cause of heel pain. So first of all, we will discuss the definition of plantar fasciitis. According to the definition, plantar fasciitis is an inflammation of the fibrous tissue along the bottom of your foot that connects the heel bone to your toes. Plantar fasciitis can cause intense heel pain also. Then comes the causes. Plantar fasciitis is often caused by repetitive motion or anything that puts a lot of pressure on the arc of your foot. So many kind of activities like running, like jogging or walking or prolonged standing consistently or being on your foot can also lead to plantar fasciitis. This slide is basically a list of the causes of plantar fasciitis, new or increased activity, repetitive high impact activities like running, like dancing, like sports, jogging, walking, like prolonged standing on hard surfaces, mostly in the professions of nurses, in factory workers, in teachers. Anatomy can also play a vital role like those with the flat feet or high arc can also have plantar fasciitis. Tight calf muscles, can also lead to plantar fasciitis, tight Achilles tendon. Obesity can also play an important role because due to obesity, there is a lot of pressure on your feet, a lot of pressure on your heel, and a lot of pressure on the arc of the foot that can cause the inflammation of the plantar fascia. Age can also be a factor. The aged people between 40 to 60, they have stiff muscles. So the kind of stiffness can cause the inflammation in the fascia. Then comes the symptoms. Initially, these heel pain patients may feel a dull ache in the base of the heel. So the most common symptoms of plantar fasciitis includes the pain, the stiffness and swelling. Pain may be in heel, pain may be in the arc of the foot, stiffness and a tight actually stand on and swellings around the heel may also be a symptom. After symptoms, then comes the diagnosis. The diagnosis of plantar fasciitis is generally made clinically, but there are many diagnostic modalities that can be used to confirm the diagnosis. That may be MRI, that may be ultrasound, which both create the images of soft tissues that can confirm the diagnosis of plantar fasciitis, especially in the cases in which their non-surgical treatments haven't already reduced the pain. There should be some assessment tests to assess the plantar fasciitis in clinics. So there is a very, very important test that is wind last test to perform and to assess the plantar fasciitis. So this wind last test is a common orthopedic test to assess for plantar fasciitis, which, which is one of the leading causes of heel pain next to the Achilles tendonopathy. The wind last test achieves a direct stretch on the plantar aponeurosis which can be effective in examining dysfunction of plantar fascia and this test can also be an important test in decision making process that can also be involved in evaluation and treatment of plantar fasciitis. To perform the test there are two positions the weight bearing position and the non weight bearing position the difference between bearing weight and non weight bearing is that sensitivity is higher in weight bearing and a positive test is whenever the reproduction of uh, symptoms reproduction of pain with the passive dorsiflexion of the toes both of the positions can be discussed individually first of all we will discuss the first position that is non weight bearing position in this position, the physiotherapist have to passively raise the toes of the patient while he or she is sitting to see whether this causes pain or not. The patient's knee is flexed to 90 degree while in a non-weight bearing position, the, the examiner or the physiotherapist stabilizes the ankle and 
then extends the metatorsophalangeal joint and allows the interphalangeal joint to flex this extension of metatorsophalangeal joint to the end ridge can cause or th that can provocate the pain so it will tell uh, that the test is positive then comes the weight bearing position with the patient in the weight bearing position the examiner creates a grade 2 extension in the same way that was done in the non weight bearing condition the test is performed in the same way but the subject is instructed to place the equal weight on both the feet in the weight bearing position in this the patient stands on a step stool and positions the metatarsals of the head of the foot to be tested just over the edge of the step as you can see in the first picture of this slide then the examiner passively extends the first metatarsophalangeal joint while allowing the interphalangeal joint to flex in the same way as was done in the non weight bearing position then the passive extension of the first metatarsophalangeal joint is continued to the end range if the patient's pain is reproduced or it is provocated then it will show that the test is positive after diagnosis after assessment of uh, this plantar fasciitis there should be a treatment the treatment includes medications special devices the kind of physical therapy electrotherapy so most of the people who have plantar fasciitis recover in several months with conservative treatments such as icing in the painful area stretching and modifying or avoiding the kind of activities that causes the pain there are many kind of medications for the pain relievers and for inflammation pain relievers such as ibuprofen and naproxen sodium can ease the pain and inflammation of plantar fasciitis after that there are some kind of special devices to release the symptoms the night supplements your physical therapist or healthcare provider might recommend that you wear a splint that holds the plantar fascia and actually stand on in a lengthened position overnight to promote the stretching while you sleep in the case of orthotics your healthcare worker uh, or healthcare provider might prescribe off the shelf or custom fitted arc supports or orthotics to distribute the pressure on your feet more evenly and same is the case with the walking boots and canes and crutches that your healthcare provider might recommend one of these for a brief period either to keep you from moving your foot or to keep you from placing your full weight on your foot this will help to reduce the inflammation of the fascia then comes the physical therapy a physical therapist can show you exercises to stretch the plantar fascia and actually stand on and to strengthen the lower leg muscles stretching is one of the best treatments for plantar fasciitis so stretching should be focused on plantar fascia and actually stand on a therapist might also teach you to apply the athletic taping to support the bottom of your foot and a physical therapist can show you stretching exercises that can you you can repeat at home several times a day that will help you recover from plantar fasciitis then hal then comes the ice therapy using an ice pack is a great way to soothe the inflammation and pain in the sole of the feet instead of applying ice directly use an ultra cool ice pack in the way you can see in the first picture in this slide the ice therapy can be given in another way uh, like you can uh, get a bottle and uh, fill it with iced water and roll it on floor in the way you can see in the second image in this slide then comes the electrotherapy in electrotherapy the low frequency electronic uh, electrical current stimulations of electrotherapy can block the body's pain signals thereby it can reduce the heel pain it is very much cost effective as compared to the other expensive treatments while some of the treatments reduces the pain on temporary basis but uh, electrotherapy works on the root cause in order to give the permanent relief naturally this electrotherapy stimulation in addition to the stretches and due care can help to fight the pain associated with the plantar fasciitis and heel spur and showing a uh, an overall improvement in the functional activity levels helping you to get back your happy feet in electrotherapy first comes the ultrasound therapy so in ultrasound therapy it is considered the most 
effective and non-invasive and a drug-free treatment of all. Use of ultrasound machine over the heels can help in increasing the blood flow by eliciting the muscular contractions in soft tissues, alleviating the inflammation and the heel pain. It can also be an effective method for the heel spur treatment with combined with the traditional RICE and PRICE that can be an excellent plantar fasciitis cure. In electrotherapy, after ultrasound therapy, there comes the shock wave therapy that is very, very much important to get away from plantar fasciitis. Shock wave therapy is delivered during a machine that generates a low energy sound waves through your skin to the site of the injury. It has been extensively researched and is recommended by the National Institute of Clinical Excellence for the treatment of plantar fasciitis. It can be done by a kind of probe that can give a shock wave and it can be performed in the way you can see in the picture in this slide. Then comes the manual therapy. The three treatment protocols utilizes were foot and ankle manipulation that is combined with the cross frictional massage. Then comes the gastronomous complex stretching combined with the cross frictional massage. And then comes a combination of three that is foot and ankle manipulation cross frictional massage and gastronomous complex stretching. Now we will discuss how to perform these three kind of manual therapy that you can perform by yourself at home. Ankle and foot mobilization can be performed by yourself. You can sit on a, you have to sit in a chair and cross one leg over the other knee as your ankle is on the top of your leg. With one hand hold your ankle, other hand on your toes, gently pull your toes backward until you feel a stretch in the bottom of your foot. Hold this position for 20 seconds and repeat three to uh, three times for both the feet. And you can perform this uh, maneuver, this kind of mobilization of uh, three to five times a day. After ankle and foot mobilization, there comes the cross frictional massage. That is very, very much important. Cross frictional massage is an effective form of massage for plantar fasciitis. During this procedure, a massage therapist does not use any kind of lubricant, so the fingers massaging the foot do not slide across the skin. Instead, it takes the skin with it, allowing the force to transfer to the deep muscles. After the cross frictional massage, there comes the gastronomous stretch. In order to give a gastronomous stretch in your leg, you have to stand facing a wall with your hands on the wall at about your eye level. Put the leg you want to stretch about a step behind your other leg. Keep uh, Keeping your back heel on the fo floor, bend your front knee and then you feel a stretch in the back knee. Feel, because you are giving a stretch in the back leg. So hold the stretch for 15 to 30 seconds and repeat 2 to 4 times a day. There are many kind of home exercises that you can perform for plantar fasciitis including the tennis ball roll that you can grab a tennis ball, rolling pin and a frozen water bottle or any kind of cylindrical objects you can put under your foot. Towel stretch, toe stretch, toe curls, calf stretch, picking up marbles. These are all kind of activities you can perform at home for plantar fasciitis and these activities can be performed in a way you can see in this slide. So that was all about plantar fasciitis. For more videos and for more presentations about physiotherapy lectures, do subscribe our YouTube channel. Thanks.